Hello everyone. Today I want to share with you uh, my opinion on how I think you should go about choosing a PhD program. I tried to release this video around the time when people found out their uh, PhD admission results. That way it can help out some of you who are deciding where to go. Um, but I hope that this video can also help people who are hoping to apply for PhD programs in the future. So it can either expand or like narrow down your list. At least in the States, PhD programs will usually start giving out results um, mid-February sometimes March. If you've been waitlisted, then you'll find out either April, May, or June, the results of that. I'll try and give you like some useful tips on stuff that I thought about when I was trying to decide where to go, stuff that uh, I wish I did, um, so you can learn from my mistakes as well. And some of the stuff you might have heard already, some of the stuff will hopefully be new, um, but all of it should be pretty important. So I'll start off by talking about like the academics because that's really the focus of like what a PhD program is all about. Now you should already know this, but when you're deciding which PhD program to attend, you should always be thinking about uh, what kind of a research experience would I be getting if I were to go to the school? So this is kind of different from when you're choosing which college to go to um, because as a college student, you're spending a lot of your effort taking courses in fundamental topics. And so you kind of want to look at the entire university as a whole. But because the PhD is very specific in what you do, like you're doing research for a particular professor in a particular topic in a department, you really want to put most of your effort researching that department and trying to see which particular research topics you can contribute to. In preparation for visit day or when choosing like which particular school you're trying to attend, you want to spend more time uh, looking through the department website, the professors who are working there, as well as the research topics that the professors are involved with. If you've already applied, then you should have done some of this already. Once you've gotten in, now you can spend even more time looking at the schools now that your list has hopefully narrowed down a bit. Another thing I want to emphasize is that during your PhD program, you don't actually have to do research on a topic that you've learned when you were an undergrad. Or if you've done research in college already, uh, you're not restricted to doing research on the same topic as you were doing in college. When you start a PhD program, you're really free to do whatever you like. You're essentially a blank slate. So if you find professors who are running labs on topics that you're interested in but you know nothing about, like you're totally free to explore that. I recommend, and this is actually pretty obvious, going through the department website and trying to find out professors that are working on something that you're interested in. Once you have that list of professors, check out the website of each of these professors and look at what kind of research topics they are working on. Hopefully there should be a list of publications as well, like recent publications. And what you can do is you can look through the publications and try and search for them, either on a Google search, Google Scholar. If you're currently in college, you should have subscriptions to um, a lot of the databases, and so a lot of these publications will be available to you. If not, then do what you can. Um, some of these papers are still on open source databases, and you can still access them. Quick note, and this is very important, sometimes um, on professors' websites, they have research topics uh, spanning over several years, and you might see research topics of stuff that the professor did like 10, 20 years ago that they no longer do. You want to clarify uh, which of these research topics the professor is currently working in. Um, the last thing you would want is for you to attend a school, uh, try and work for a particular professor and find out that they don't do research in that subfield anymore. Probably the most important thing that you're doing during visit day is talking with the faculty and trying to get a sense of which professors you can work with um, as well as like what you could be working on. Of course with the advent of video calls and virtual meetings uh, you don't necessarily need to do it all on visit day. You can do it either before or after. In addition to the research that you could be doing, you really want to get a sense of like what kind of a style uh, the professor has when they're supervising the lab. For instance, some professors are very hands-on, uh, in which case they're very involved in your research. Some professors are very hands-off, and that can greatly change like your experience as a PhD student. Not only that, you might have some professors who have been working on this field for like 20, 30, 40 years, and you know they have a lot of ideas. Um, they have a lot of uh, opinions on like what direction they want to go in. On the other hand, you might have some professors who are like just starting out and they're very new to the field. And so in those cases, you might have a lot more uh, freedom and responsibility in finding like what direction you want to go into. Uh, so that can also change the experience. I did hear the saying that uh, the professor that you work with is as important, if not more important than your actual research topic itself. Um, now that's debatable. Um, but the fact that it's even a debate shows how important it, uh, your advisor is uh, when you're trying to determine which PhD program to attend. And I highly recommend that whichever school you're choosing, 
you not just have one professor in mind, but you have multiple different labs in mind. That way, uh, if your like, first choice lab doesn't have the space to accommodate you, you'll actually have other options, other interesting topics that you can do research in if your first choice doesn't work out. And if you get the chance, you can even try and arrange for video calls to speak with uh, their students. Uh, this is assuming everything's virtual. A few weeks ago, my PhD advisor at Stanford uh, asked me to speak with a prospective student. And I was happy to spend like an hour uh, over video chat to talk with the student um, and tell them about my experiences. So a lot of students are, are happy to share with you their experiences as well. In addition to thinking about research topics or the professors, you might consider other things as well. For instance, some PhD programs will sometimes offer you fellowships if you choose to attend their institution. You know, one year, two year, three year fellowships. And that can make a difference for you. Fellowships are nice because they give you financial freedom and flexibility in which lab you attend. Otherwise, you would either have to get a TA ship or you would have to find a lab that has the funding to provide an RA ship for you to pay for your PhD. Sometimes professors, they only have a limited amount of funding, so they can only take on a limited number of students. Um, sometimes their groups are just too big and they can't admit students for that reason. Uh, but sometimes it's a funding issue. And if you come in and say, well, I have my own funding, that professor is often happy to take you on. And then in an ideal situation, uh, once your funding runs out, the professor might have gotten new funding, new grants that would allow them to pay for the rest of your years of the PhD. The fellowship shouldn't be like the most important factor in your decision, uh, but it can make things a lot easier for you. And so far I've mentioned only like academic reasons for choosing between PhD programs, but there are also like, you know, other reasons uh, similar to college, for instance, you want to make sure that the campus is nice. You have schools that are in the city, sometimes you have schools that are in the suburbs. You want to make sure that you're okay with like the weather, um, because you know that can affect your mood day to day. But yeah, all of these would come into play when you're making your final decision. I feel like I've pretty much covered everything I want to talk about. Um, hopefully this was useful. Try and put some thought into this because it's like the next five, six or more years of your life. Uh, so, you know, really, really do your research and talk to as many people as you can. Like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos, and I wish you all the best.